Greetings to those interested in learning about confidence intervals. Picking up where we left off, we discovered that if we repeatedly take samples of size 5 from a normal population, the distribution of sample means will also be normal. In addition, we saw the center of the sampling distribution was approximately 16, but the spread of the sampling distribution got smaller when comparing it to the population distribution above. This normal population distribution represents the theoretical population of the weights of the bags of pretzels. Now, this histogram represents the population we worked with in the last video, the 100,000 weights. This histogram represents the means of 1,000 random samples of size 5 taken from the 100,000 weights. Compare these two histograms. What do you see? The means of both distributions are close to 16. This is what we expected because we know the sample mean is an unbiased estimate of the population mean. However, we can see the two standard deviations differ. The questions now are, why is the sampling distribution less spread out? Also, what characteristic of the sample is related to the spread of the sampling distribution? Pause here to reflect on these questions. Thinking about the first question, consider a lecture hall full of students. Which of the following is more likely to occur? Randomly selecting one person from that group of students who is over 6 foot 5 inches tall, or selecting a sample of 5 students at random whose mean height is over 6 foot 5 inches tall. Pause here to think about this. For the mean of 5 students to be over 6 foot 5 inches tall, each individual in that sample would have to be quite tall, right? Therefore, it is more likely that one individual is 6 foot 5 than the average of 5 individuals. In general, averages are less variable than individual values, and we know the sampling distribution is a distribution of averages, or sample means. Okay, consider the next question. What characteristic of the sample do you think is related to the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean? Pause here to think about this before continuing. To visualize this relationship, I simulated another 1,000 samples for my population of 100,000 values, but this time I increased the sample size of each sample to 15. Compare the histogram of means of samples of size 15 with the histogram of means of samples of size 5. What do you see? Pause here to think about this. The shape of both distributions is roughly normal. The means are both close to 16, but the spread of the histogram of means of samples of size 15 is smaller. Why is it smaller? Pause here to reflect on this. Now, we will look at four graphs, including another sampling distribution graph when the sizes of my samples were n equals 30. First, we'll see these graphs one at a time. Watch what happens when I animate this. Now we could see the four graphs simultaneously. Notice the values of the standard deviation of each graph as they appear. From my simulation data, we can see that the means of the sampling distributions remain close to 16 in all cases, but the standard deviation gets smaller as n gets larger. Recall your answer to the question I asked before. Did you think that increasing the sample size may decrease the spread of the sampling distribution? If so, you thought correctly. Now. Can you identify the specific mathematical relationship between the population standard deviation, the standard deviations of the sampling distributions, and the sample size n? Pause here to think about it. Specifically, the standard deviation of each of the sampling distributions is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Again, the sample size n is the size of each sample we take from the population. Our sample sizes are 5, 15, and 30, respectively. Our simulation standard deviations for each sample size are very close to the quantity sigma over the square root of n, as we can see here. 
Lastly, there is a logical reason that the spread of the sampling distribution gets smaller as the sample size of each sample gets larger. To illustrate this, we could look at the 1,000 samples of size 5 and size 15. There were a number of samples of size 5 where each value in that sample was greater than the population mean 16 ounces. Here is an example. However, when n equals 15, the sample with the largest mean still included values below 16 ounces. Here is that sample. Thus, there is more potential for variation from samples of size 5 than samples of size 15. The 1,000 means from samples of size 5 are more spread out than the 1,000 means from samples of size 15. This is exactly what we saw in the graphs. Now, what if the population we were sampling from was not normal? Consider the time between arrivals of vehicles at a particular intersection. The time between arrivals is known to have an exponential distribution. For this example, let's consider the average time between arrivals to be 16 seconds. This is the histogram of the distribution. What do you see? Pause here to observe and analyze this graph by comparing it to the normal distribution. We see that the distribution is skewed to the right and looks nothing like the normal distribution. Values represented in this graph are 100,000 individual times between arrivals at a particular intersection. In addition, we see that around 3,000 times between arrivals are recorded at 0 seconds, which means that another vehicle was waiting behind the first one. This variability in times may be due to observing these arrivals at different hours of the day or night. What if I built a few sampling distributions from this non-normal population just like we did for the weights of bags of pretzels? I took 1,000 samples of size 5 from my population of 100,000 exponential times, calculated 1,000 means, and graphed those means in a histogram. Then I repeated this process and changed the sample size of each sample from 5 to 15 to 30. What do you think the shapes of those histograms will look like? Pause here to consider your answer. Now let's take a look at the histograms as we did before. First we will compare the population histogram to the sampling distribution histogram when n equals 5. What do you see? Pause here to think about it. The sampling distribution shape is less skewed than the population shape. Also, the sampling distribution histogram is less spread out. Pause again to attempt to predict what will happen if I increase n from 5 to 15 and then to 30. Now we will see these graphs one at a time. Watch what happens when I animate this. Now we can see the four graphs simultaneously. Pause here to interpret what you see. First, note that the mean of each sampling distribution remains close to the population mean of 16. Also, note that the standard deviation still gets smaller as n increases. If you recall the relationship between the population standard deviation, the sample size, and the standard deviation of the sampling distributions, we learned that the quantity that measures the spread of the sampling distribution is the population standard deviation over the square root of n. When viewing the shape of these sampling distributions, notice that as the sample size of each sample increases, the shape of the sampling distribution gets closer and closer to an approximately normal shape. When the population you sample from is non-normal, the value of n must be large enough to see an approximately normal shape for a sampling distribution. Large enough depends on how non-normal the population is. In our case, the exponential distribution is extremely non-normal, and we did not see approximate normality of rise in the shape of our sampling distribution until n was 30. This is the essence of the central limit theorem, and this theorem will help us structure our initial understanding of confidence intervals. The central limit theorem states, when randomly sampling from any population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, the sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar will be approximately normal when the sample size n is large enough. 
The size of n depends on the extent of non-normality of the original population. In our example, the exponential distribution is extremely non-normal, and a sample size of 30 was sufficient to see the approximate normality in the sampling distribution. Review all these ideas presented in the first three videos to get a complete understanding of sampling distributions. This will prepare us for what's to come, the topic of confidence intervals.